Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a 2005 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. Looks like a clean truck and the history of the vehicle is the owner bought it after it sat for five years, it had 20,000 miles on it, and the engine was just seized solid. Water got in the cylinders and it was toast. So, uh, Jasper engine put in, was it a reman? Yes. Reman engine, and the truck drives. He drove it here from Connecticut, five hours away, and the complaint here is it runs a little rough, uh, sets a misfire code and the check engine light doesn't turn on on the dash even when you just do the bulb check it doesn't turn on now is that an issue for the state inspection in Connecticut uh, it might be it might be okay so we got two two issues here and the codes that are being set is a P0300 engine misfire detected and a P0650 MIL control circuit problem okay very cool so, first thing we want to do is just look at the misfire counters and make sure this thing is actually misfiring. So if we go to functional tests, um, I'm sorry, data display, misfire data, we should see all eight cylinders, and then miss history. And you can see the history is kind of all over the place, mostly on bank one okay very cool I already know where this is going but let's uh, let's start up so no dead cylinders I can tell you that right now And it's starting to shake. Misfire cylinder two, cylinder six. If I raise the RPMs just a little bit, it does get smoother and the misfires go away. Very interesting. Place your bets now. I'm going straight for fuel trims and oxygen sensors off the bat since we have a bank specific problem. There he goes. That 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 that. So engine data. Let's customize this. See the scanner shaking. RPM, coolant, air, MAF, TPS, and our oxygen sensors, and short and long-term fuel trims. So these are the two upstreams. They seem to be switching. Long term trim is about 2%. Short term trim is about 0. That's very interesting. And it raised RPMs just a little bit, it gets a lot smoother. Oxygen sensors are switching fine. There you go. Seems to run great. Now back it off. It's shaking. So my theory with the oxygen sensors here, or bank to banks issues, may not be correct. Now right now it does feel like a single cylinder misfire, so let's go back to our misfire counters and see which one's counting up? Looks like two and six. Two seems like the biggest culprit. Okay, very interesting case study here. So, I'm 
you can see the engine's kind of shaking a little bit. The cylinder one's over here, cylinder two's over here. Let's unplug the injector. You can see there's no contribution in cylinder two. Plug it back in, nothing. Cylinder four, there's a change. Cylinder six, Cylinder 8. Let's try the uh, the odd bank. This is Cylinder 3. Oh, it's really hard to say. On a V8, sometimes the drop test isn't the most conclusive. So cylinder two, definitely no contribution. Yep, the four is contributing. The six is contributing. Eight is contributing. So I don't like cylinder two. You can always hear something snapping. So I unplug cylinder two, you don't hear the snap. Plug it back in. Snap, 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 snap. Okay, that's definitely a problem. So let's go, let's start with that. The spark is not getting into the cylinder on number two. And take care of that problem and then see where that goes. All right, so the easiest thing to do here is swap the actual plug wires around. So I moved number two to number four, and number four to number two. So let's start it up and see if the misfire moved or not. I think the misfire mostly moved to number four, so it's looking like a plug wire. Could be a fault here. So I pulled the number two plug out just to see what the plug in the boot looks like, and there's just a lot of dielectric grease smeared everywhere, and the boot itself, if we can look inside, get a little light in there. It's not quite round like it's a little mangled so we can try to straighten that out a little bit get the grease off of here make sure the contact is good reinstall everything go for a test drive all right after cleaning off the spark plug and the spark plug wire reinstalled in the everything in the original position so this is number four again this is number two we don't hear any cracks or sparks an occasional misfire on number six number five but I mean for long-term reliability I would recommend all AC Delco spark plugs and wires but we kind of proved that that's the issue <clears throat> so I say let's take it for a spin and tackle the uh, check engine light problem so at this point I want to do a crank relearn, so in functional tests, CKP variation learn. Continue. And full throttle. There you go. Yep, successful. Back to our misfire counters.
Raise the RPMs a little bit. Looking pretty good. Again, cylinder number six, once in a while. Put it under a little bit of load. So we could do the same to the number six plug wire. You can hear it's still not happy there. All right, so we know number two needs a new spark plug and wire. Uh, let's check out the check engine light. So, no check engine light bulb control. Let's go to instrument panel cluster and do a functional test. So no codes, no codes there. All telltales, display, da -da 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 -da. See on. Where is our check engine light supposed to be? It's possible that a bulb is burned out. So those are all the warning lights. And I still don't see the check engine light. Those should be right there next to the security light, upper right. So the question here is, the check engine light, is that controlled by the cluster receiving a message from the PCM requesting it to turn on, or is there a direct wire? Because right here in the input-output data PIDs, we don't see MIL light. We see, you know, service foil drive, low washer fluid, left turn. Here's the turn signal, see that works. Fasten seat belts, da da da. Like we don't see the MIL anywhere in this data list. And keep in mind the check engine light, the, the computer actually set a code for check engine light control for the code, you know, for the, um, the circuit code. So P0650. Just out of curiosity, let's go to the troubleshooter. P0650. PCM detects command state of driver and actual state of control do not match predetermined amount of time. MIL will not illuminate. PCM will store failure record. Okay, so we need to look up a wiring diagram for this check engine light. Alright, so wiring diagram. Here is our check engine light in the instrument panel cluster. And it says IPC logic, brown and white wire goes to MIL control grounded by the PCM. So even though it goes to this logic, I think <clears throat> the computer is in direct control of the check engine light, not the instrument cluster. That's why we couldn't bidirectionally control it. So we need to find this brown and white wire it goes through connectors C100, pin G, and at the PCM it's C2, pin 46. So we'll locate that and see what the voltage is on that wire. Is it, is it making it through the instrument cluster, through this little light, trying to be grounded? Uh, easily do a bidirectional or um, just a manual bypass. If there is voltage on here, we can ground it, see if that light comes on. That'll verify circuit integ uh, integrity. Well, I think we found the treasure trove of mouse infestation. Oh yeah. So the problem is definitely gonna be here. C100 is one of these connectors, has a brown and white wire, and here's the brown and white wire. It's not connected to anything. And there's some other wires that we should probably repair while we're here. So let's clean this mess up, solder some wires in, it's going to take a little while. We have multiple, multiple wires that are chewed. And once we figure, once we reconnect all this stuff, we'll make sure the check engine light is back in action. 
Take the truck for a spin and should be pretty much good to go. A little fire. Yeah. All right, shop vac time. <laughs> so ironically the only wire that was completely shredded and broken was the check engine light wire so I guess the rodents didn't like check engine lights either but what I want to do is just reconnect that one wire and make sure the check engine light illuminates before doing the repairs and there it is <laughs> it's back so let's uh, finish up the wiring repairs and make sure this truck is good to go. Alrighty, so here's the mostly repaired fuse box. Uh, the owner said that he'll do a more thorough job a little later. But we got all the wires so they're not going to short out. And I don't see, you know, you can just leave it as is. So let's put everything back together and take it for a spin. Alright, truck's running. Let's clear the codes. So the truck is still obviously running a little rough because of the ignition problems. Let's go to data, misfire data. So misfire cylinder one. Looks like cylinder eight. So probably just one because we moved the spark plug wire from number two to number one. So the misfire did follow the plug wire. Very interesting. So I temporarily installed a Subaru spark plug wire. It's on there. So this is junk. And we see a... Uh, so you put it under a little load. So right now, number one went away, eight was a false misfire. Number six, once in a while you get something on number six. But I'd say all new spark plug wires would uh, fix this truck up. But let's take it for a spin and see how it runs. All right, so I think at this point we can let the customer have his truck back and recommend new spark plugs and wires, AC Delco OEM. And otherwise, it runs butter smooth. We don't have any constant misfires anymore. The Subaru spark plug wire definitely did the trick. If you want to be cool, you can just leave it on there. <laughs> Since, you know, it's a little part of Subaru and a Chevy, that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, basically, no parts required. And that's the way we like it. Some electrical tape, solder, and a used spark plug wire. How about that? So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.